Hello, everybody. My name is AJ Parnell. And I'm Teresa Brazak. And I'm Ariana Silfat. I am Kelly King. I'm Alana Ennis. And we're going to be taking everybody through our uh, West Kendall Baptist Hospital presentation, uh, discussing some of the options that we've put together on, uh, on community impact. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, just a high level overview of our agenda today. Um, we're gonna start by just touching on our problem statement that was assigned to us, um, then going to briefly touch on the triple aim. Um, we'll follow that up by discussing our stakeholders. Um, and then we'll get into some of the options that we've self uh, that we've set forth uh, for community impact for uh, West Kendall um, and then we'll, we'll end with uh, discussing the recommendation of the options that we've discussed um, so just starting off with our uh, problem statement that we were assigned here um, so using the IHI triple aim for populations what are the three ways um, West Kendall Baptist Hospital can impact the West Kendall community. Um, obviously, the IHI triple aim is identified as a standard um, for healthcare delivery. Um, so this is something that we uh, that that we intently focused on um, in developing our options and recommendation. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Kelly um, to get us started discussing uh, the triple aim. Thanks, AJ. So the Institute for Healthcare Improvement has been recognized as the industry standard for research and policy development. And they have developed the triple aim, which is a three-dimensional framework uh, to improve population health. Um, and it has been said in the future, successful healthcare systems will be those that can deliver high quality of care at a lower cost while simultaneously improving the health of the population. And this is what the triple aim sets forth. So the first dimension of the triple aim is population health. And this puts emphasis on preventative health measures and increased access to care um, in order to improve the health of the population. Um, secondly, the second dimension is experience of care. And this seeks to improve the overall quality, effectiveness, care delivery processes, reduce medical errors. And then finally, the third dimension is cost per capita. Um, this seeks to reduce the overall healthcare expenditures, and this should be done by effectively improving the first two dimensions of population health and experience of care. So they all go three, all three of them go hand in hand. And um, so we'll also be talking about the stakeholders individually, and the three that we'll focus on is West Kendall Baptist Hospital. And this is the stakeholder that's being held accountable to achieve the goals of the triple aim. Uh, we'll go into payers, which is both government and private payers. And finally, the community, because they're the ones that are in need and benefit the most from the healthcare system putting forth the efforts to achieve the triple aim. But they also play an important role in helping the healthcare system achieve those goals. So um, the Baptist Health System recognizes six pillars of excellence. It's really at the center of everything that they do, um, whether it's from everyday operations to leadership to the way that they think. And those six pillars are service, people, and growth. And then the three that we'll talk more in depth about today are community, finance, and quality. And in the latest strategic plan for West Kendall Baptist Hospital, one of the major focus areas um, is on meeting the needs of the community. So additionally, one of the high priority areas of practice reform and national health care policy is to reduce emergency department utilization and hospital readmission rates. Um, in 2010, CMS, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, um, established the readmission reduction program. And essentially, this is a program that penalizes hospitals for high readmission rates. So there's certainly incentive to reduce those admission rates. Um, these are also publicly available data. So anybody can go on and see on the, the website and see what um, your readmission rates are. Um, Medicare patients account for approximately 18% of the West Kendall Baptist Hospital patient population and close to 1 million Medicare dollars were at risk in 2018 due to the readmissions. Um, so this is certainly an opportunity for the hospital to focus on uh, in order to save money, improve quality of care, and, and improve the population health. 
um, improve population health within the communities has also been directly related to reduction of hospital readmissions. And improved health literacy, which we'll go into in depth, has been shown to be successful in helping to reduce readmission rates. And nearly one third of Americans have limited health literacy, and this is most common in low income Hispanic and Black populations. Additionally, Baptist Health System patient population is approximately 77% Hispanic, so certainly an opportunity. Um, being that this is a population that does has been proven to have limited health literacy and we can focus on improving this in order to meet the goals of the triple aim. So AJ will review those options a little bit later, but now I'm going to turn it over to Ariana to discuss payers as the next stakeholder. Okay. Thank you, Kelly. So here, as Kelly noted, we will talk about payers um, being one of our stakeholders. Um, Medicare being um, total charges of 12% and private and self payers being 75% um, makes a huge um, chunk of you know, West Kendall Baptist reimbursement. So there we will also talk, actually talk about payers reimbursement being based on disease codes, performances, and also patient satisfaction, which is there talk about the age caps and they use that to determine the facilities reimbursement. Um, another part of the reimbursement is actually the val value-based purchasing. Um, and West Kendall Baptist actually qualifies um, for that with them not being a specialty hospital, like a children's hospital or a psych hospital, but you know, still impacting the community um, at that point. On the next slide is actually talking about our stakeholders, who is the community. Um, the community that West, ben West Kendall Baptist Hospital serves um, is very diverse. Um, as my colleague Kelly mentioned, it is 77% Hispanic and Latino. So that also, in terms, gives them the opportunity um, to boost their care with behavioral health, access of care, and primary care, um, you know, moving forward with West Kendall. On this slide is actually our community partnership edge. Um, this will give West Kendall Baptist the edge. On the left here, you would see that the hospital can partner um, with huge employers um, in the Miami-Dade area, but also the schools or outside organizations. Um, having that said, with Miami-Dade being a huge um, population of underserved, this will give West Kendall Baptist a Hospital the opportunity to expand more um, and be able to touch those communities, being, being the fact that the underserved community Did Ariana uh, cut out there? Uh, social determinants of health. They will be able to help with those partnerships for West Kendall Baptist. On this slide, we will also talk about the community impact opportunities through health literacy, reimbursement, and community partnerships. So here, I'll actually turn it over to my colleague, AJ, to go more and talk more into health policy, um, health literacy. Thank you, Ariana. Um, so as Kelly noted, uh, health literacy um, is something that has been directly correlated uh, with readmissions. Um, so we can define health literacy as the degree to which individuals have the capacity uh, to obtain, process, and understand basic health information and services needed to make uh, appropriate health decisions. So um, in a sense, health literacy can really be viewed um, as a level of understanding that somebody has about their health status and their health treatment. Um, uh, so, so it definitely impacts their ability to make, um, you know, coherent, conscious uh, decisions about, um, about their health. Um, so again, as Kelly noted, um, one third of adults in the U.S. have limited health literacy. Um, you know, only 12% of adults have above a basic health literacy level. So the grand majority of people um, do have health, some, some level of health literacy challenges. Um, and what we've seen with people who have health literacy challenges um, are an overall worse health status 
status, um, as, as well as worse overall health outcomes um, in their treatment. Um, they're also more likely to utilize hospital and emergency services, um, meaning that there's going to be a higher likelihood of, of readmissions after discharge, um, which we've been able to pinpoint for a range of two weeks to 30 days since the uh, previous discharge. Um, and given the fact that, you know, West Kendall Baptist Hospital does face readmission challenges as well as the demographic um, of, of a heavy uh, Hispanic and Latino community there, um, this is definitely an area of opportunity for them to look into um, in terms of improving to, uh, to, to impact the community, um, mainly through decreasing uh, readmissions. Um, so how do we do that? So there's kind of three tactics that we looked at. Um, and, and each tactic is more advanced than the previous one. Um, for starters, um, we talk about standardizing caregiver training, um, which really just entails um, training providers, nurses, um, anybody who's any kind of caregiver on how to um, interact with patients on a day-to-day -day level to, to a point that they can comprehend given the fact that it's more likely that they are, they have some type of a health literacy challenge um, or have just overall limited health literacy. So this entails, um, you know, using screening tools, whether it's like a screening assessment or, you know, just using open-ended questions um, to assess uh, a, a patient's understanding of what we're explaining to them. Um, obviously, speaking slowly and clearly, um, using simple technology and avoiding, you know, very dense uh, nomenclature um, that that can really kind of be confusing. You know, uh, avoiding an assumption that a patient um, understands what we're talking about. Um, another big one is using excuse me, teach back and teach to goal methods. Um, and the idea here is to um, convey information and have them, um, you know, basically, you know, reconvey the information to the provider to ensure that they have comprehended what, uh, what the provider is explaining to the patient. Um, and then also, you know, kind of using charts and graphs and, you know, just a, a simple visual aid to offer patients um, as just another um, way of explaining um, a symptom or a diagnosis or the importance of some kind of treatment to them. Um, so these are all very simple things that can be taught at the provider level and that should honestly um, really just be standardized across all um, all provider patient interactions. So then we look at topic focused communication and, and that's essentially kind of an enhanced um, kind of an enhanced approach to, to what we've previously discussed um, with an emphasis on a specific area of improvement. So, you know, what West Kendall Baptist can do is, um, you know, is kind of have a roundtable discussion amongst providers um, and talk about, you know, what, what are our challenges in communication with patient, patients and hone in on those and develop kind of preconceived strategies um, to, to be able to communicate to the patient specific to this issue, um, whether it's you know, communicating to them about their diagnosis, um, communicating to them about lab results, about medication adherence. Um, these are kind of things that, that, that are good areas of focus. Um, and I know that, you know, um, you know, chronic heart diseases are an emphasis of West Kendall. Um, and we've actually seen results um, with topic focused communication um, lead to a 50% decrease in patient um, readmissions, as well as overall increases in nurse and patient knowledge um, on, on heart failure. So um, that presents a very good opportunity as well. Um, and then the final opportunity to improve health literacy are intensive treatment education programs. Um, so really what this is, is um, an education program for both providers and patients um, specific to an illness or specific to um, a treatment plan. Um, so basically what, entail, what it entails is, um, you know, training providers um, on how to communicate to patients specific to an illness or treatment plan. Um, and then patients essentially enrolling in, in this kind of an education program um, that is synonymous with their treatment program um, to where the, the providers and the caregivers have both a role in treating the patient um, as well as educating the patient um, through, different, um, through different aspects and, and different dimensions so that um, the patient is getting a, a kind of a holistic approach um, to the education of their illness and their treatment plan. Um, and ultimately what it does is it empowers the patient's ability to make decisions on their treatment, whether it's, um, whether it's just you know, general 
um, general like nutrition information or um, an optional procedure and, and weighing the pros and cons of getting that procedure. Um, and some examples of this that we've seen is, is the, I, the, the peak and the IPEAK programs at the Roggison Institute, um, where qualifying patients can enroll at the referral of their primary care physician, um, patients with kidney disease specifically, um, who are surrounded with a multidisciplinary care team um, who, who um, kind of attacks you know, the treatment education from different angles as far as a clinical angle, a social angle, to really understand, um, you know, what the patient's experience is and then regurgitate, um, the, uh, regurgitate treatment information um, and explain their symptoms and diagnosis to them so that they're better equipped um, to make decisions about their treatment. Um, and ultimately, what we've seen with that is um, improved overall health outcomes for patients in this programs, um, as opposed to kidney disease patients not in these programs, um, as well as an increase in specific procedure utilization that is not normally seen um, for patients with kidney diseases that, um, that has led to, uh, so to better care results. So these are kind of the three approaches for health literacy improvement that we've put together. Um, so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and hand it off to Alana um, to, to discuss um, some reimbursement incentives as an option. Thank you, AJ. So pay for performance or P for P is one of the reimbursement incentives that West Kendall Baptist Hospital can use for their healthcare providers to become more motivated and encourage them to perform better with their duties. Uh, P for P is designed to help reward employees for meeting pre-established goals for the delivery of healthcare services. The goal of P for P is to improve, motivate, and enhance providers to pursue, achieve, the quality performance targets while decreasing the number of medical errors and less malpractice. Obviously, the key players that we have today are going to be the payers, the purchasers, the purchases, the providers, and the consumers. Uh, the health ecosystem is one of the components that fails in the whole, when the whole system goes down. Performance measures are keys to knowing if a hospital is performing close to 100% or when it comes to the overall patient care needs. So this is why the P for P for P model is important here as well. Uh, the model is also encouraged because it can identify the most effective programs and achieve the best possible outcomes. Um, some of the pros and cons for P for P is that it's simple, it's appealing, it can help for financial incentives, quality improvement, efficiency gains, and it can also uh, eliminate excessive costs. One of the other pros is motivation for employees. You can give incentives, monetary or non-monetary, uh, these can spark goals and want people to work harder and work smarter and enjoy their job. It can also help employees who are not meeting their goals to be like their peers and want to do better as well. So an example is to incorporate a reward program and a recognition program, letting employees know that they are appreciated. So seeing more patients, uh, healthcare providers can receive monetary or non-monetary benefits. Employees who possess the ability to learn um, to earn more bonuses based on performance issues, we have a higher morale. Some of the cons that they experience are not improving the health of patients. That's one of the biggest flaws of the P for P model. So patients are at risk for becoming sicker, getting a proper treatment, and job satisfaction can also be much lower. Healthcare providers only concentrate on the areas addressed in the pay for performance program, so they overlook issues of quality and cost and may be risky to their organizations and their overall success. And one of the biggest cons of P4P is that it allows providers that are strictly based on medicine and what they learned in school to treat their patients. By checking off any kind of checklist and pre-established goals, doctors find that they're not giving the best quality of care to their patients. So it can bring out the worst employees, and even if they're not being compensated monetary or non-monetary for their efforts, this can reduce job satisfaction. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Teresa so she can let us know our last option. Thank you, Alana. And our third and final option is to enhance community partnerships that West Kendall Baptist Hospital already has. And this will allow West Kendall Baptist Hospital to achieve its IHI triple aim, as well as address the top three priorities that they recently identified in a community needs assessment. So this option has three components. The first one focuses on mental health education and assessment. By partnering with FIU Medical School and Miami-Dade Public School Systems, 
West Kendall Baptist Hospital can target education and assessment in high schools for behavioral health. The literature states that behavioral health issues begin early in a person's life. With many cases, 50% or more beginning under the age of 14. Suicide is the second leading cause of death between the ages of 15 and 24. So there is a well-known need to be able to assess and to address the educational needs of teenagers in today's society. The target for this education will be to decrease the stigma of behavioral health. Many times people do not get the care that they need because of the stigma that's attached to behavioral health problems. By, by, by educating them early and addressing this stigma, this could allow teenagers to open up and to be diagnosed early if there's mental illness. It also allows teenagers to speak to counselors and through an assessment, identify whether or not they have family mem members with behavioral health needs. The second component of our option is to, is to provide access to care for neighboring communities. So by expanding the partnership with FIU Neighborhood Health to provide health screening and primary care to geographic areas in Miami-Dade with lower medium um, uh, income levels. So when we did an analysis of zip codes around West Kendall Baptist Hospital area, we found that certain zip codes such as 33177 and 33032 had a lower median salary as well as younger populations. This could indicate that these type of populations have a higher incidence of uninsured or underinsured that could lead to costier care if, if they arrive into the emergency room at West Kendall. So providing primary care in these communities could pr provide access of care, in this case preventative and primary care, at a much lower cost alternative. The third component is primary care offering in large employer work sites. By partnering again with FIU Medical School and some of Miami-Dade employers, the largest ones in Miami-Dade, by providing uh, primary care medicine in their work sites. Some of these large providers, I'm sorry, some of these large employers in South Florida include Carnival Cruise Lines, Royal Caribbean, Del Monte, for a rider systems, and Burger King. The literature shows that su such clinics on site that provide primary care are provi provide a very strong ROI for the employers. It improves patient outcomes and patient and employee satisfaction. It allows for patients to maintain their primary care appointments because they don't have to cancel, they don't have to take time off, and so this leads to a healthier workforce. This also allows West Kendall Baptist Hospital to provide this care in a work site whereby specialty and follow-up care could then occur within the Baptist Health um, Organization. So our recommendation, based on all three options, is to go with option number three. The reason we recommend option number three is because it addresses the components of the IHI triple aim, as well as the top three opportunities identified by West, West, West Kendall Baptist Hospital's recent community assessment. This option is, is one that is easier to implement since it is expanding programs and partnerships that already exist between West Kendall Baptist Hospital and some of our other community partners. Thank you. Awesome, well thank you so much everybody. Uh, we really hope that you enjoyed our presentation. Uh, we really enjoyed putting it together and we hope that uh, everybody found some value uh, in what we have to offer. So thank you very much and have a wonderful day.